Of course, it's always a fun time out on the water, and one of the most fun parts is not knowing what to expect. You never quite know what you're going to see or what's going to happen when you get down there, just like some of the instances we'll witness in this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Our first story to make the boating news this week is going to take us up to Halibut Cove in Alaska, where these scenes went viral this past week, when apparently a local business owner decided she was going to take out some of her frustrations on a local tour pilot. Here in these images we can see the local business owner has decided she's going to go out in her boat and try and interrupt this tour. The airplane actually has seven paying passengers on board at the time the incident occurs, and here we can see just how close the local business owner comes to actually hitting the airplane. The pilot later in an interview mentions that it came within inches of the wings several times and almost hit the prop in the initial images we saw there as well. It's still undetermined at this time what exactly caused this scene. Of course, local authorities and the Coast Guard are both investigating. At this time, little information really has been released as to the identity of the boat driver itself, but in the initial recordings of these videos, it can be heard by the tone and some of the things mentioned by the person recording, they obviously know who this is, and it really isn't all that unexpected of them. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Europe and Belgium and the Netherlands in the Schielt Rhine Canal, which is a canal that was designed to connect the Antwerp with the Volkerak, where this was the scene a little bit over a week ago as the movable wheelhouse vessel Southford approached the Baithberg Bridge. <laughs> And this was the aftermath after the vessel collided with the bridge. Apparently, according to incident reports, the captain began to approach the bridge. This vessel is equipped with a movable wheelhouse which allows them to raise and lower the wheelhouse based on different river levels and different bridge heights that the vessel may have to traverse. As they approached the bridge, the captain began lowering it, and the next thing they knew, the wheelhouse became stuck and would not lower anymore. But by the time it was realized there was a mechanical failure of some sort, it was just too late, the vessel was too far along, they could not stop it, and the incident occurred. Fortunately in this situation, the captain was able to recognize the situation and get out of the wheelhouse before the collision occurred. Nobody was injured in this incident, and the company does say they do plan to repair the vessel, but it may take up to two years for repairs to occur. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Finland, where this was the scene this past week, when a Finnish naval minesweeper ran aground during a coastal fleet exercise. The vessel was actually towing a target into the exercise grounds at the time of the incident, and unfortunately it actually did suffer hull damage and began to take on water immediately after the grounding. Fortunately, the crew quickly stepped in and was able to secure bulkheads and get the vessel's water intake limited. The vessel did have to spend the night on the sandbar until divers could arrive the next day to check the integrity of the hull to make sure it was still seaworthy and that the vessel would be able to be safely pulled off the sandbar. Once that was determined, the local fleet that was out there assisting with the the exercise was able to attach lines to the vessel and begin to attempt to remove it from its embankment. Fortunately, during this incident, there were no injuries reported. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Italy, where this was the scene this past week. This is the 130-foot luxury mega yacht My Saga, and it had set sail from Italy's southern coast when all of a sudden it realized it was taking water on from the stern of the vessel. Quickly, the crew reached out to the Italian Coast Guard, and local rescue vessels were sent to the scene to try and rescue the nine people people who were on board the yacht. By the time the local crews arrived, there was little they could do to save the yacht, and the owner actually had to contact a salvage company to come out and try and rescue the vessel. A few hours later, the tugboat Alessandro II arrived and took the four crew members and the captain on board as they began to try and tow the yacht toward the Italian coast. But unfortunately, bad weather made the process difficult. And due to the hindrance of the bad weather and slowing down the process, the yacht continued to take on water till the tugboat realized it was just impossible. They were not going to be able to tow the vessel to the coast and had to abandon the process. And this is the final scene here. But fortunately, due to the quick response of the Italian Coast Guard, everybody was okay on this one and no injuries were reported. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us up to Massachusetts, where this was the wild scene that happened a little over a week ago at the Mattapoiset Boatyard. Here, it can be seen where a massive fire broke out engulfing almost every vessel, vehicle, and building that was on the land at the boatyard. The six alarm fire had over 100 firefighters respond to the incident, but local officials and people who were on the ground say it all happened so fast there was really no saving it and they are calling the boatyard almost a total loss. 
One of the local employees actually said from start to finish, it only took approximately 15 minutes for the entire facility to be ablaze. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways, be sure to hit me up on Facebook or Instagram and let me know, and you might see your stories over here. Just like Thomas Himberg, Dean McCullum, Mateus Matchek, Oliver Dow, Wendy and Larkin Isaacan, and John Stevens did this week. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here. If not, we're coming to steal your drain plug.